Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. So today I'm back with my honey bear dress. I've been away at um, Barham Settling Inn and I left honey bear's dress in my craft room in Brisbane. So when I did the work on the words, I sort of just had a go at making something, but I didn't, so I packed all my gear up and I brought it back with me. I didn't end up doing anything with these because I wasn't sure if this would work at the time or not. So now I'm back. I've got um, an opportunity to put this on her little dress if if it works. Otherwise, we might have to make something out of these little ones that at least I got stitched. So that's the plan. Feels like forever since I've seen her little dress. And I'm just wondering... So you guys, this looks a bit plain here, okay. Uh, so you guys would know the prompt. I won't. I'm filming this Wednesday afternoon and you're watching this Thursday. Gee, that'll work. Anywhere else it'll work. So I will get the prompt and I'll probably pop back Saturday with the prompt and Honey Bear's dress, I'm thinking. Let me put that there. It doesn't feel like it's too big. See, I was worried it'd be too big, but it's actually it's actually okay because this is so big. Yeah, I'm gonna nestle it in there. Well, that worked too too easily. I do have these little ones, so we might stitch this on and then see how we're going and maybe have a little look at some of those other words because it's a an opportunity to add them I think so being this has got a decorative outline I might just do invisible stitch on this so I don't want to take away from that decorative edge so I think I think that's what I'll do yeah I think that's what I'll do feels good to be back in Brisbane I must say I don't know if it's Barham, I've got sticky tape on my fingers. Barham feels like a holiday. I think it's because it's the beach and it's just so different and the house still doesn't have that lived-in feeling. Does that make sense? So when I was coming back into Brisbane, Gaz stayed there. He's um, got you know, to oversee the building of the retaining wall, which has actually started, and they'll be wanting to level you know, all of the remaining soil. And I said to him, look, I'll go back to Brisbane this time as he did the last run. So yeah, I, I thought oh, I'll go back and cuddle my doggies. So Fudge and Gaz are at Burham. And um, yeah, it feels, actually feels good. It still feels like home. Does that make sense? It doesn't feel like we've left yet, you know? So I'm here for a week. In that time, I've got to cook a heap of meals for Dad, um, pack a heap of boxes because I came back in our work van. So the plan is I will spend the week packing and I'm just going to do some invisible stitch through the centre here just to at least hold it all. And then I can come back and concentrate on making sure that those edges are really secure so nothing catches. So I'm just going to jump all over the place here. So yeah, my week is catching up on errands, um, pack some boxes, which I've already started. I got back yesterday. It was a bit of a trip, might I just say. I'll tell you all about that in a minute. Um, what else am I going to try and do this week? Um, yeah, really just pack and cook some meals for Dad. And then I'll return to Barham probably probably Friday next week. So it's Thursday for you. And um, drop off some meals, top him up. That'll get him through to January. I'll see him over Christmas anyway. But I thought, oh, I've got the van. It's easy for me by myself to get the big eskies into the van because I don't have to lift them into the back of my car so 
yeah that's that's the plan and give the house a bit of a tidy it's pretty good because it's only you know my Chelsea girl house sitting and she pretty much just eats and sleeps <laughs> she's at work most of the time so the house is pretty good but it needs a bit of a tidy up wash some bed linen you know all those little boring jobs catch ourselves back up and then I think I've worked out the comings and goings for the next month or two right up to New Year's and Chelsea has those dates so she knows exactly where she needs to be and when so there'll be a bit of toing and froing still but um, she can now sort of plan her social calendar so yeah we're um the year is nearly done unbelievable i'm pretty confident i'll get a van load again of boxes there's no furniture or anything like that to go so it should be pretty simple for me to just fill boxes and load the van and because i've got a week i'll just do a couple a day and then take them out and pop them in the van so I've loaded the van a hundred times for work with stock boxes so I should be pretty good with the old loading of the van routine I do want to put in the chair I'm sitting on too because I've set myself up in the craft room for filming but I'm using one of the dining tables the dining room chairs and um, it's very uncomfortable to sit and film in it's because it's probably not the right height for the trestle table that I'm also temporarily set up on. So I do want to put a chair in, an office chair, because these are adjustable. So I will be able to drop my butt down so that I'm sitting at a better height. So I do need to pack a chair. We've got um, friends and family coming over Christmas and New Year. So I went to the shop. You girls are going to think I'm like a what, what would you jack of all trades when you hear this. We had hoped to have quite a bit of concrete around the house for Christmas, you know, at least somewhere to hose your feet off with sand before you come in the house, just to sort of have an area that you can clean up after going for a walk. But I don't think it's going to happen. The, the weeks are slipping by and those um, workmen, they work hard all year. So they'll all want to take time off leading up to Christmas. So we've come to the decision we're just not going to have a patio anywhere out the back. And there's a tap out there that's great for rinsing your feet. But you're standing straight into sand because we don't have grass. And... You're just as dirty as you were a second ago after rinsing your feet. So this is the genius of the girl. I had a, a plan. I had a plan. I had first thought of getting one of those annex sand blankets. You know, when you put an annex up in a caravan or you're camping. What have I done? Have I knotted that? Lucky there's easy stitching to do here because I'm yibby yabbering. So the plan was to get a sand annex floor lay that down and then you can rinse your feet and walk across which is at what four meters to the door to get in the house and i thought no that's still going to have sand it's not you know not fill proof and one of the guests coming for new year she's a smoker so Having stayed with her a few times at her place, I noticed that they have a bit of a morning routine where they have a coffee and a cigarette and they'll sit outside um, at their place and they'll text their daughters and have a little chat before they sort of start breakfast. So I said to Gaz, we need to make some form of outdoor area for those who want to, you know, sit outside for a bit. And um, so the plan is, I went to the shop, went into the warehouse and I was positive I had a stack of those plastic pellets. What is that thread there doing up in the air? They're pretty much useless for us and stock, but every so often orders would come on these plastic things. 
What is that thread there? There's a little knot. That's why it won't come through. Is that one from me just then? Oh, I'm just going to cut it. I'll reinforce the lace around there. So, yeah, anyway, they're like plastic molded pellets. They're probably 1.2 by 1.2. So I shot into the shop early this morning, unloaded a heap of rubbish that we had from moving the last trip up, and went into the warehouse, and sure enough, there were six. They're bright blue plastic pellets. Beaut. So I hung around the car park like... Uh, waiting for the staff to come and luckily one of the lads was on for the day and I grabbed Cody and I said come on mate come to the warehouse with me and help me put these plastic pellets into um, into the van and there was one black one which is a rectangle so I grabbed that one as well I nearly didn't but I thought no nah, put it in so the plan is, and you can imagine me telling this to Gaz, he's like, I don't know how you're going to create an area, you know, for people to at least move from a hose or a tap on the wall after rinsing feet to enter the house without getting re-sandy, you know. So I've got the pallets in the van and the plan is to line the six of them up along the back door. There's my patio. It'll be off the ground. And I'm going to go to Bunnings, I'm going to get some plywood and I'm going to screw that down to the top of the pallet. So that will make them one lineal piece and they won't move. They'll just sit in the sand. It covers up any ankle twisting opportunities. Not that they are like a normal pallet. They're actually meshy on top. That makes sense. They, they don't have strips of timber like a normal pallet. And then that one black one, I'm thinking if I put that near the tap, it's quite long and large, it will be a perfect spot for someone to walk up to it, step up on it, rinse their feet. I've got a hose up there. Rinse the feet and the water will just run straight through. And then from there, if they can step onto this makeshift patio pallet constructed <laughs> I'm going to slow stitch together <laughs> six blue pallets with some timber <laughs> to make a patio so that my guests can sit outside, have their morning coffee if they so desire, and have somewhere that, you know, we can stand before we step into the house with clean feet. Because otherwise, oh, I, will, I will not be happy if the house gets full of sand. So I'll just be this grumpy host running around, hostess running around with a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Could you picture it? Don't move. Let me vacuum that sand. It'll drive me bananas. So <laughs> I'm going to construct a surface outside to stand on. I hope that makes sense. I hope you understand my engineering design. So that's the plan. And then in the van this week, I'm going to pack a couple outdoor chairs. I found a camp table that's not real big. It's, you know, probably a metre by 50 centimetres, a couple foot by half a foot, little narrow thing. So that'll be good. That can sit on this pellet, pelleted constructed thing and um, <laughs> and potentially be somewhere to sit your coffee of a morning so there you go that's what i'm up to my husband he just rolled his eyes he's like yeah it, it'll work the the um retainer wall is being built and all of those bricks came on these timber pallets so i was like hovering at the window going well, look there's 20 timber pallets imagine what i could build with them and my husband's like no they've got um phd or what do they call them the, it's a brick company in australia not phd um oh i don't know can't remember it they've got something painted on the side he said they will have to send them back so i wasn't allowed to take those pellets my husband was like no 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 they they will probably there's my bandit 
You'll hear my puppy dogs now for the next few videos. There they go. The mailman just went down the road. Oh, I've missed them. In lots of cuddles. Lots and lots of cuddles. As soon as I finish this video, I'll go back outside and just sit with my hounds. I've missed them. Really missed them. But I must admit, I'm sort of looking for fudge. I'm so used to him being around in the Brisbane house. And of course, he's now up at Burham. As I walk through this house, it's like, fudge, oh, that's right. He's up at, with Gaz. So that's what I'm up to. I've got a busy week. And in amongst all that, I'm going to catch up on Honey Bear. There'll be a prompt. I believe, isn't there going to be an extra little project too? How exciting. I'm pretty sure that's coming tonight for me and you'll be watching this of course and already know if it did or not so i'll definitely be back saturday with a roxy journal of stitchery video i think that's pretty good that feels really secure so we've got our words in position so now let's have a little look and our girl's dress, you've got a couple gaps. Yeah, that's great. All right, let's have a look at these. Is there an opportunity to work some more words in? She's a bit of a one of a kind. That to me feels like a honey bear word. Okay, let's have a look. Where could we nestle? Let's go to the front of the dress and start there. Something around the bird maybe. So we've got one of kind, dream big. So we've got three, imagine possibilities. Okay. So yeah, they're like they just complement. They, they could seriously go anywhere. I like that there. Probably there. Let's stitch it down. Should we use a coloured thread? Let's invisible stitch it down first and then I can think about a decorative surround. So yeah, I was going to tell you about the trip down. Oh gosh, there was at 3am in the morning a B-double semi-trailer with the extra long bit on the end um, rolled over on the Bruce Highway the driver is okay from what I can understand which is good but um, there's all this roadworks as they're putting in this big bypass to bypass um, Gympie this won't mean much to those of you in another continent but it's pretty big for us because they've been working at it for a long time but it's put so much roadworks that you've really got to keep your wits about you and there's this one like a culvert that they've upgraded with a bigger bridge and instead of going straight through they've made this little windy bit and then off you go again and it looks like this poor guy, like I know they're supposed to be aware of their driving, but you know, 3 a.m., it was pouring rain because we had a lot of rain that night. He's come hooting down the highway and this little culvert suddenly is there and it's dark, it's in the middle of nowhere and boom, he's laid the semi-trailer down. Oh gosh, that must be so scary and a big one. So it popped up on my Facebook feed as soon as I woke. And I wasn't planning on going too early anyway. Because I'd sort of like all the traffic to disappear. And then I'll slip into Brisbane just after lunch was the plan. And I noticed that there was a Facebook post everywhere saying Bruce Highway closed. So I ended up not leaving until about 1.30, which was fine and they'd reopened it. So I was expecting to sit for a little bit, thinking that the traffic would be 
you know, they let one lot through, then the next lot. But um, it was open to actually use that funny little road that they've created while they build this bridge. And of course, as I come up to it, traffic was flowing both directions, single lane, which it had been for months. Half the problem, I think. And um, here's the prime mover part still lying on its side. And that is just the most surreal thing to see. Like, oh. Gosh, it nearly made me tear up. It just, oh, they're so big. They're so big. <laughs> and when it goes pear-shaped for them, oh, my goodness. Well, the actual trailer bit on the back of the prime mover, I think they call that the dock. The dog or the front bits of dog. I can't remember. I used to know all that when I was a kid living on the farm. I've forgotten all those little details. So I do apologise to anyone out there who's a driver. Hats off to you. Oh, goodness. So, yeah, the, they stood up the prime mover, uh, the, the back bit, and they had huge skip trucks there. They were big semis with skips, and they were throwing all of the wares into the bin, and it was all groceries. So I could see, like, I don't know if it was Woolworths or Coles. I, I don't know, but I need some threads. Where are my threads? Hold on, girls and guys. I need to grab my threads. They're just on the table next door. Won't be a second. <clears throat> okay. I just want to put a bit of blue around that little. And I've still got my threads sitting in my bag that I travelled with. Here they are. So, yeah, the, there was a heap of men there with like a chain gang, so to speak, and they were pulling out all of the wares from this semi-trailer and throwing them in a bin. So it was a bit sad to see all that waste. But um, I might just do something subtle, just blend it. So that was a bit surreal to see, but thank goodness the driver was okay. You hear some terribly sad stories. It's high risk behaviour driving semis. And our rail system in our country is pretty much obsolete. It's such a shame. So everything in Australia pretty much moves by uh, trucks. And in that, you've got the risk to humans of serious injury if it goes wrong. And it's, you know, for years. When I was a kid, it was all by train. You'd put something on the train and go into town and you'd pick up whatever it was that come up from Brisbane at the local train station. They were functioning trains, train stations, so to speak, for freight. And they've just, they're all gone. They've pulled up the tracks and they're rail trails now where people hike them. Meanwhile, the trucking industry is just working overload to try and keep up with the freight. I'm having a gripe now. I just find it amazing when you have a system and then it just fizzles out. Would you believe we're building a up our way, the, a little town between Barham and Harvey Bay? We're building a huge, huge train factory. Because, in our wisdom, the government's decided to make a heap of trains to help move people around Brisbane for the Olympics. So they've been busy digging tunnels for years and now we need trains to go on all these new train tracks around Brisbane and we don't have enough cabooses and carriages so they're spending millions and millions of dollars in our local area up there to create a train making facility. And because it's on the train line that still goes from Brisbane through to Cairns for tourists and a little bit of freight and coal and sugarcane and stuff like that, um, they're now going to have this factory up our way to build. It'll give you know a lot of jobs in the area but it would be nice to make it freight so we can take a bit of pressure off our road systems. So yeah, there's my gripe. 
my little political gripe, but what would I know? I'm just a, a minion. I did consider running for local member years and years ago. I was really into what the local government was doing and I had considered it and I thought, no, I'm going to say something. <laughs> Could you imagine? I'll say something in an interview and get myself in trouble. I could just see I would last a week and I'd be getting a tap on the shoulder from the leader of whatever the party was I decided to join in the end, saying, look, you've said the wrong thing. You're going to need to resign. <laughs> I can guarantee it. <laughs> so, yeah, political career was probably not the best for me. The, sometimes the mouth is not connected well, you guys know me. The mouth is not connected to the brain. It's a wonder I can yibby-yabber and stitch at the same time. Pure talent. <laughs> Pure talent. Well, we found a home for one of a kind. Little birds, one of a kind. Dream big. Where are we going to put that? This could do with something. My favourite thing. So I've already got that on there oh I like that there these words they're um it's a great prompt if you haven't put many on your piece I'd probably urge you to revisit your piece and add some more words because they just I don't know I'm finding they are tying areas together just with a little little something I'll probably do the same again just invisible stitch it in so that it's nice and secure that's these tiny little stitches if you're a newbie and you're wondering what the hang the girl's talking about there we go so yeah that's what I've been up to so tomorrow is the start of summer my stitch the seasons I finished spring and I haven't started filming summer because I left everything for it here in Brisbane. So I can't wait. I'm going to finish this honey bear video. I'll drag out the pieces of fabric that I had put aside for the project. I'll film the first episode of summer. And that'll give me something to stitch. And I might then have time to film episode two for the next Friday. I'll see how I go. If I can get a few done, that'll be great. That'll scoop me ahead. It's a good one for me to pre-film because once I sort of dive into that piece, it's lovely just to keep going. It's I don't mind this because you pick it up and put it down. But those that spring one, oh, once I started... I think I did a week solid on it and filmed about eight videos because I just couldn't put it down. I was just so enjoying it. And the summer one's going to be so bright and gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So I haven't looked at it for about a month and a half. So I want to pull it out while I'm back in Brisbane and have a really good stitch. And I'll be able to stitch till the wee hours of the morning because... Husband's up at the other house, supervising tradesmen. So I can run amok, guys. Mm, I need to go and get groceries. I've got no food. <laughs> I'm running on a packet of twisties <laughs> and um, two apples, and I've already eaten them. The twisties, they won't take me very far. There's half a um, thing of milk. So I've had a coffee. <laughs> I'll go tomorrow. Groceries tomorrow. And I'll get um, I'll get all the ingredients I need to cook for Dad's meals. And that will give me meals as well. So I'll sort of just nibble nibble off a little bit for myself. So it'll all work out. Don't feel sorry for me. I'll be fine. I've just got to get through the next 24 hours. Gee, this is slipping around. The other one in doesn't slip because it's sitting on that crocheted blanket. Uh, crocheted crocheted uh, tablecloth. 
So yeah, I really could do with some food. Things are a bit lean. I know Gaz was complaining when he got back to Brisbane. He did the last trip, as I just said. He goes, there's nothing to eat. I'm like, well, we haven't been there. You'll have to go and do some grocery shopping. He says, there's not even quick snack stuff. I said, well, no, you'll have to, you know, get something. And then as I was walking out the door, I thought, oh, maybe I'll just go to the fridge and grab a few things. And he said, yeah, you better because there's nothing down there. I'm like, well, you should have restocked. No. <laughs> and he's right. Well, you know, to be honest, there's heaps in the freezer. But the only thing that really is missing is just some fresh produce. There's plenty if you're so inclined to actually cook, which he wasn't. He was looking for quick, quick solutions. So, yeah. Once I get out tomorrow and do up a bit of a shop, and then I'll start cooking, cooking meals. Where's that line going to go? There or there? I'll start cooking Dad's meals, and oh, there'll be plenty. There'll be food everywhere. The girl won't go hungry. Husband obviously did, but the girl won't. We've got big storms coming into Brisbane tonight. We've had solid rain for a day. Oh, treacherous driving back, let me tell you. I got as far as the Sunshine Coast and it pelted down, absolutely pelted down. We're just gingerly creeping along the highway, trying to stay out of trouble. So it's, we've had a, a fine day today, but the humidity is through the roof. The sun is shining, there's clouds pushing through. You can see that there's winds very high up and the clouds are moving through. And apparently we're right in the zone for severe hail and thunderstorms by about four o'clock, I think they said. So I raced around this morning and did all sorts of chores and I'm, I'm in now, inside, nice and safe. So I'll just be fine. But the humidity, my goodness, you can feel it. It's giving those storms that energy they need. But hopefully they'll scoot past me and won't, won't impact me. So there's another one, Dream Big, Honey Bear. My favourite things, one of a kind. Then we've got the Creativity is Courageous, Contagious. Now, I not really want to do too much there because what's the next prompt? But I do like that. There. Yeah, let's just do it. You can always unpick it, hey, if, if the prompt is something that needs a bit of space. And then I think there's two prompts, is that right, guys? Or is there an extra prompt? I don't, I don't know. I've lost track. It doesn't matter. We'll soon be, soon be told. It's all good. Okay. Did I get that knot then? I need to also finish this week my Fleur Woods. Oh, pulling it out of the needle. Let me downsize my needle. I need to finish my Fleur Woods piece because it's been here in Brisbane and there's probably, oh, probably 30 hours of stitching needed to finish that. So that's another thing. Summer and Fleur Woods are my objectives. I've got a few snippet stitcheries. Oh, what is going on? Need a bigger knot. It's just pulling straight through. Fleur Woods and Summer is the objective. Um, and as I was just saying, I've lost my train of thought there for a second. 
the snippet videos I've got a few of them ready all filmed and the December prompt for the vintage blend studios project vintage sewing techniques stump work I finished that that's filmed there's three videos there one every week for you so that's done so there's a little bit of filming I did while I was in Barham, which is great. You'll know, <laughs> you'll be confused because the sound of my voice when I'm at Barham is very echoey because there's not a lot in my craft room yet. Where here, my voice sounds better because there's carpet and a big table and, you know. So you'll be like, gee, that girl gets around but it'll be a pre-recorded video for this next week. So that'll confuse you all. You'll be like, she gets around. You can hear my washing machine beeping. I'm madly trying to wash linen and wash towels and Okay, so that's stitched that's not going anywhere and now just might do a couple stitches through the center there gives it a nice little quilted dimple look I wasn't sure if I'd use all of them but um, I'm glad I did four there we go Um, so now I can just grab that little bit of blue cotton that's remaining I hope the camera system is okay for you guys too I had a bit of a panic last night I realized that I had not packed and I'd left it at Barham the frame that holds my iPad so I was in skelter mode, scatter mode, what's what's the words? Scampering mode to rig something up. And luckily, uh, my husband had a, a, a boom, an arm, that he uses when he zooms, not, is it zooms? Twitch, when he does twitched pinball connections with his mates. But I didn't have a cradle for the iPad fit in. So I was online looking last night and everyone was like, yeah, we can have it to you by mid next week. And I'm thinking, no, the girls ain't going to like that. There'd be quite a few days without videos. We have an emergency. So I ended up finding a cradle at Bunnings. So I went there this morning and bought the cradle. And yes, it holds my iPad which is now attached to the boom that luckily my husband had because it would probably be pretty hard to find a boom, but at least the cradle I found. The only problem is the cradle, I was just unable to connect it to the arm. So you should see it. I should take a photo. It's hilarious. I've used a piece of, <laughs> I've used a piece of rope, some calico rope, <laughs> and I've bound the cradle to the arm it's hilarious so I, was, I sat here for you know 20 minutes thinking how do I get that to connect I tried all sorts of grommets and undid this and undid that and pretty much pulled my husband's whole filming thing apart to find bits couldn't do it could not do it I, I was like nah then I looked at my desk and here is you know cordage from making the um, rice bags just sitting there and I'm like right we're gonna do a MacGyver and I've bound the bar of which the iPad hangs on that bar and the bar of the boom have been bound together with a lovely bow so the iPad is up and I'm filming 
could not film like it's my downtime is stitching so I was a bit panicky like what am I going to do couldn't believe I forgot it I was so concerned that I'd leave threads and scissors and all my projects behind that um, I forgot the actual filming so yes I also need to film the angels remember um sonia from ah uh, sonia not sonia susanna from vintage brand studio sent me that beautiful piece of christmas panel of fabric and there were the three angels and she's challenged me to make something i have an idea but i needed my sewing machine which was in brisbane so i've got that back here as well there you go the third thing i've got to do summer as many videos as i can um the angels any roxy that pops up and what was the other thing so i've already forgotten oh yeah and flow woods oh my goodness i'm gonna be a busy girl and pack probably about 50 boxes and get them into the van and cook 100 meals <laughs> Gosh. sounds worse than it is it'll be fine there we go i like that and we've got a little bit of space left. Yeah, love it. Still got a little bit of space here, potentially. Could do something with that, but we'll see. Just, I do have a couple little treasures yet that I wouldn't mind putting on her dress, but we're just, just wait, just wait. Okay, all right, guys. I think that's probably it. Um... What else? Yeah, I think that's probably it. I might leave it at that. I'll say goodbye. And for the Roxy project, I'll see you Saturday. And tomorrow will be the first summer video. So look after yourselves and uh, have a lovely day. Bye.